Thanks for rescuing me. Well, you sounded like you needed it. That and something to eat. How about a Buzz burger and fries? Wouldn't help. But I bet you'd eat it anyway, right? No. I lost my appetite. <laughs> Look, Squirt, don't let him get you down. Yeah, right. Come on. I mean, when they were on your back about Tony, what'd you do? You laughed it off? No. Okay, okay. They can be, mom and dad can be intense. Intense? I mean, they're making it seem like I'm gonna ruin their lives if I don't do what they want. And they both want, like, completely different things. Okay, so you know what? Forget about that. What do you want? I don't know. Play for the pros? Make a living at doing something I like? Uh, a living? You'd be making a fortune. Yeah, but it's a gamble. And then if I go to Stanford, you know, I could, you know, I could play for a good team and get a degree. I don't know, it's a disaster. A disaster? Shane, a disaster would be if you didn't have any choices or any options, but you have two great ones. You're a lucky guy. Yeah. But? I don't know. Okay, there you guys go. Thank Enjoy. You. Mm -hmm. Take a hike. What? Stop. Stop. Put your apron down. Step away. Grandpa. You work all the time and you don't complain. For you, that is unnatural. And it's making me twitch. Look, it's fine, all right? I need the extra hours. I want alloy wheels for my car. Alloy wheels? Wow, it's going to be a muscle car by the time you and your old man. I hope it. it is. Go shopping for alloy wheels. I can't afford them. Well, then window shop. Okay? You have barely set foot outside this place since, since Ben was released. Perhaps you don't want to run into Ben. Why would I care? The guy's a waste of space. It's fine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I am over it. Really. Table three's order is up. Hi, sis. Hey, what are you doing here? Um, I'm uh, meeting Josh. Oh, uh, uh, no, that would be fun. No, all our meetings these days are about butting heads over shame. No, actually, I'm waiting for you. Um... Oh. Am I late? I Hi. hope I didn't keep you waiting. No. Hello, Mrs. Winslow. Hi, Cassie. I hope you found the demonstration the other night illuminating. It was something. It was. Didn't expect to hear from Richard, that's for sure. I hope it wasn't upsetting. Mrs. Winslow! You know, words from the beyond aren't half as upsetting as what's going on here. Excuse me. What's your problem now, yeah. Mr. O'Neill? Well, now that you mention it, there is a problem, yes. Room service was late again, but that's okay because the food here is inedible. I had to call the deli to get a sandwich, which I have to eat now on the way to the hospital. But that's oh, not did you I'm... contract a fatal disease? Oh, that's good. That's really good. The reason I'm talking... Why don't you give your complaints to the front desk? Lord knows we have a file this thick of them. I don't always complain. Oh, really? I don't know why I would think such a thing. You know, I came down here to apologize for bursting in on you and Eddie Boy the other night, but I guess... I don't want to discuss that with you. Well, of you course you don't. I don't blame you. At least you're keeping it all in the family, huh? You know, Shane, you must have some thought in your head. No, I don't. I mean, it's just pressure either way you look at it. So I go pro, that's extreme pressure 24-7 because you got to perform, right? And if I go to Stanford, it's the same thing. Only got I got classes all on top of that. So you, what, want to hang out with the boys and party and chase girls? Yeah, why not? I mean, I'm a young man, right? Uh, this is my time. Oh, this is your prime, yeah? <laughs> yeah. For women, to scratch that, girls. Shane. All right, look, you know what? You want to you wanna party, you want to go out and have fun and chase girls, do that for a summer, and you'll be so bored. All right, there you guys go. Enjoy. Uh, um, okay, cool. Uh, this is not a request. Get the hell out of my restaurant. Grandpa. Or I'll close it. You know I will. Ah. Don't make me close it. <sighs> yeah, but how am I supposed to know that? Huh? Like, who'd even tell me? I don't know. Who? You? Go, relax. Find some fun. Okay. So I need to do something, or else I'm just going to be a total boring loser, right? Uh, eventually, yeah. Look, 
You love baseball, so don't let mom and dad ruin that for you, or else you will lose out. Yeah, but it's it's already like ugly. I mean, I feel like I don't even enjoy practice anymore because of it. Okay, now, but someday you will be glad that you went to practice. You're that. <laughs> you go out with a guy for a few days, you, you play house, and now you're like a parent. All right, you know what, Shane? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to tell you to blow off practice, to blow off your big chances? I thought you called me to ask for my opinion. No. It was to pick up the tab. The only way you will lose is, is if you don't make a choice. Just pick one and go for it. Yeah, right. So that's what you do, huh? Yeah. <sighs> well, what about Tony? Tony loves me, and he wants what's best for me. And if he didn't, then he wouldn't be the right guy for me. So that's how you know? Yeah, I guess that's one of the ways. Shane, what is this really about? Louis! Heard you missed practice twice last week. Drop and give me 50. <laughs> You're sensitive, not demented. There's a difference. What you're experiencing is real. You know that, don't you? Well, it feels very real. Then why do you doubt it? Why me? As opposed to everybody else. Mm. Reva, everybody has some capacity to see beyond themselves. It's like turning the dial on a radio and picking up static. That's how it is for most people. But for a rare few, like you, there are voices in the static. And occasionally, wonderfully, there's music. Can you hear the music? No. After years of study, I can tell the difference between being perceptive and being gifted. I am perceptive. You are gifted. Oh, sorry. That's me. Ah, <clears throat> uh, it's Joshua. Oh, take your time. Uh, no, no, it's... Uh, uh, he'll leave a message. Eva, is there a problem at home? No. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's family stuff. Sorry, it's none of my business. Actually, it's okay. It, it's just that my son has some very difficult decisions to make about his future, and my husband and I can't seem to agree on any of it, and I, I really am not going to run off about my kids because it can be very boring to other people. Unless the other people are parents, too. Both of mine are grown, but somehow there always seem to be issues. Well, I'm just glad I'm not the issue this time around. Is that the problem? Reva, are you afraid to work with me because it'll cause trouble at home? Yeah, same thing happened on the last case. I gotta go. Can I call you back? Thanks. Yeah. As a guest, you are allowed to complain about the food, the linen, the lighting. My personal business is none of yours. Do you understand? Well, then stop putting it on display for everyone, lady. I beg your pardon? Yeah. You're the one that bars in on me uh, and my friend. Oh, friend. <laughs> Is that what we're calling it now, a friendship? That's quite a friendship you got there. I play poker with my friends, but you... I you... doubt that. What? Did I play poker? That you have friends. I know why you're so defensive. I am not defensive. That's been okay. quite a shock. When Arthur dialed up your dead husband the other night, hmm? Kind of hard to shack up with the brother when you know the husband's keeping score. Why are you so determined to goad me? And what's it to you who I call a friend? And while we're on it, why were you the one that interrupted me and Edmund, well, huh? Let's see, um... Uh, there was a murder to investigate. Yeah, and that's a job for the police. So why did you, the district attorney, knock on my door? Huh? Why? <laughs> Don't flatter yourself, lady. It's called professional courtesy. Courtesy? From you? Ha! Ha! Okay, good. Call me back. Bye. 
Hello, I'm Dr. Boudreaux. What seems to be the trouble? Okay, great. I thought I was past the, oh my gosh, it looks like Richard stage, but I guess I'm not. Uh, my name's O'Neill. No, okay? I know who you are. You're the district attorney. My husband is Rick Bauer, the new M.E. He, he told me all about you. The resemblance. So were you a friend of the late, great Prince Dickey? No. No, I wasn't, but I owe him a great debt. My husband is alive because he has his heart. So, uh, why don't we check yours? Uh, excuse me? Well, at your age, we can't be too careful. So we'll run a stress test and EKG the works, okay? No, no, you Can don't you understand. Take off your shirt, Wait a minute. Well, you're not shy, are you? I mean, that's not your reputation. Okay. There you go, Doc. Yeah. <clears throat> Knock yourself out. Excuse the cold hands. So do you... Uh... Shh. Do you like Please. Your... Do you like your job here? Is it a challenge? Some patients are a real challenge. <sighs> okay, well, your heart sounds good. Is there any heart disease in your family? Not that I know Take of. Take a deep but... breath, please. <clears throat> Let me try this again. Do you like your job here? Yes. What if you like your job here so much? Why do you want to be a law clerk with the DA's office? Is this a job interview? <laughs> you put your name on the list at the law school. You applied for the job? Well, yeah, but I expect it to be called like a real interview. Well, then you'd show up all dulled up and prepared. Now, what fun would that be? So you prefer an ambush? Well, I prefer to think of it as checking someone out in their own environment. Now, you going to take the bar this July, right? Yes. And your mother is a psychologist, and your father is a dean at a university. Your brother is an honor student. Okay, if you tell me what I had for breakfast, I'm throwing you out of here. <laughs> you come from some pretty high-powered genes there, Doc. And I have those genes. Is that why you think... You can just switch careers now and become a prosecutor. Well, that's one of the reasons, but I want to help people. Oh, you want to help people. Isn't that sweet? Well, maybe you better stick to bandages then. We don't need any bleeding hearts in the DA's office. We deal with hardened criminals every day, and we work like hell to lock them up. Maybe that's not your thing. Oh, I'm not finished with my exam yet. I'm done. No, you may bully everyone else around, but this is my turf, okay? And I'm just getting started. I had to come by here first, Richard. It's been almost a year since I've been given a second chance. I just wanted to thank you. I, uh, I just had a real milestone today. I finished the 10K race. Half the town was out there cheering me on because they, they all knew what was going on, and they knew. They just wanted me to win. Well, I certainly didn't win. And I didn't set any records out there, and I hurt every step of the way. But you wouldn't let me quit, Richard. We did it. We finished that damn race. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry to interrupt oh, you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry you had to see me. Talking to your late husband like that must be weird. Weird is thinking your late husband's talking back. I accept that I have whatever it is. 
But it doesn't give me the right to drag my family through it. Why do you insist that it's a burden and not a blessing? Because that's how it feels. Yes, right now, because you're trying to ignore it, to stuff it down. Which means that it controls you instead of the other way around. I can't control it. Because I get these feelings and sensations whenever. They just pop up all and, the time. And you just blurt them out. Y yeah, yeah, at times. And that gets you in trouble. Sometimes. Then keep quiet. You can just keep this to yourself, you know. In fact, that would be better for right now. Until you learn how to interpret what you're receiving, you'll just get yourself into more problems than anything. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt anyone. Then don't. Keep my mouth shut until I learn what I'm doing. Exactly. Thank you. Riva? What is it? Riva? We will continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. Well, I think we'll just keep that one quiet. It was just a chill, you know, just a um, chill. Like someone walking across your grave. It's just an expression. No, how did you know that? Know what? That I saw a grave, that it was a vision, a, 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 a feeling, but you saw it too. No, 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 it's just a coincidence. Please, sit down. Reva, did you see anything else? The headstone. It looked like Richard Winslow's grave. The man that you helped pass on? My sister's husband. When was Richard's accident? Almost a year ago. Uh, almost exactly a year ago. Well, then it's no surprise that you should be thinking about him. Anniversaries are very powerful events. And some of the things that cross your mind are going to be just ordinary reactions and impulses. It wasn't Richard's grave. But you said... Uh, it, that it looked like Richard's grave. Until I saw the inscription. It... It was Cassie's name on the headstone. But I'm gonna stay calm. I'm not going to make more out of this than I should. But you're being a little too quiet. And I saw my sister's grave, so No, no, please... no, you didn't. You couldn't have. It doesn't exist. You saw an image, not a photograph. A, a feeling, not a fact. It was a symbol. Yeah, a very clear symbol. No, maybe not. Think about Cassie. She's suffered a lot in the past year, hasn't she? Yes, of course she has. Would you say that a part of her died with Richard? Yes. But that's too easy. Besides, it's, it's all changed now. I, I haven't seen her stronger or happier in, in, in months. And she's even dating, Lord help us all. <laughs> The husband's brother. You were concerned that she got the wrong impression about him at the Yes, reading, right? he's a con man. Edmund is all wrong for her. And she knows it deep down inside. At least she used to. But it's as if she's forgotten all about it. Yeah, she's forgotten it. She's forgotten everything he's done. She, she's made it history, like it's over, that it's... Dead and buried. So you think that's what I saw? My sister burying the past. Makes sense. So then why do I, I feel like it's creepy and, and wrong? <laughs> Only because you think it is. Riva, do you think your sister's happy? Yeah. Then maybe your fear, your creepiness, isn't fear for Cassie's life. Maybe the sister that you've known so long has changed so much that you're just afraid of losing her. So, uh, you really think uh, it was Richard and not this Arthur guy blowing smoke? It seemed to me. Mm -hmm. you know, I, this guy, Arthur, could not have known that I was going to be there. And he certainly doesn't know where I am in my life right now. And you know, it had to be Richard. Okay, you're sitting there looking at me like this guy was feeding me a load of bull, right? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, my sister thinks this guy's right on, so it's got to be true. <sighs> Any clue on who this new lucky guy's supposed to be? No, I, 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 well, I mean, I do have an idea, but, you know, it's... it's, it's 
He, he did give me a message, you know. Oh, what was it? Nothing is what it seems. Well, this guy's a genius. No, it doesn't sound like Arthur's hedging his bets at all. Uh, here's, here's hope for new life, but don't be too hopeful. And <laughs> wait a minute, no, I see you being kissed by some handsome young man in the next Ooh. 20 years. And, <laughs> Oh, uh, and, and by the way, don't hold me criminally liable for any interpretation I'm about to say. Well, wait a second. Does, does, like, not being what it seems has to be a bad thing? Right? It could be good? I guess not. I just... You're quite the optimist these days. Yes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be. I, I do. And, and I need things to be clear. I really need things to be clear. And that's why I'm here, because I... I need to talk to him. Of course you do. And I gotta run. Oh, run? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's right. Yeah. You're awesome. I, right. I heard about you on the radio. I finished. I finished. Yeah. Richard would be so proud of you. He would. Thanks. I bet you he was watching. Thank you, boss. Take care. Talk to you later. Very silly. I'm coming here to talk to you because I know that you're not like here, but I didn't really know where else to go. And I really need to have some quiet time with you. Oh, Richard, do you remember when we used to just get away together and we would find a tree to sit under and have a picnic? And we would say whatever was on our mind, or we would say nothing at all. Sending me a new man. <laughs> I guess it's better than internet dating, but you know, can't you be a little more clear? You know, I have no idea who it could possibly be. And oh my god, egg salad on pumpernickel with mustard and pickles. This guy may share your face, but your taste is so much better. Okay. Well, it's, um, it's time you speak up. <laughs> and don't say about what, because we both know. Edmund. Your brother. Yeah, you... You tried to tell me so many times that there was good in Edmund, and I just didn't want to hear it. I would just rant and rave about all the horrible things he had done to you, to me, to everyone, and... And you would understand, but you would look so sad because I didn't see it. But now I do. I do. I mean, if there is anyone who isn't who they seem to be, it is Edmund Winslow, right? And you told me so. He's been so kind to me. And the kids, you know, he's not great, but man, he's trying. And he's been a good friend to me. And more. I mean, isn't that... Isn't he... The one? Like, isn't he the message? Because I really need to know this clearly, Richard, because, boy, are things going to get complicated. <laughs> All right, well, I haven't been struck by lightning, so I guess that's a good thing. me to do. 
I'm going to live. And I'm going to learn to love again. Okay, well, that's it. We'll uh, see if you need any follow-up blood work, and that's it. That's it, huh? Yeah. You're dismissing me. We're done. I'm not. I still don't have a law clerk. What do you say? Me? I thought you said I was too bleeding heart. Yeah, well, I reconsidered that when you stuck that needle into my arm. Listen, I'm not looking for a yes woman. I saw your coursework, and I saw your grades. I think you'd be a great addition to the staff. Let me guess. The city government is under pressure to hire people of color, not to mention women. And you decide to kill two birds with one resume. See, you are smart. <laughs> well, then you understand why I don't have time for this. It's not a handout, Doc. You just spent an hour with me. Do you honestly think that I'm going to hire someone that I didn't want to just because some pointy-headed bureaucrat has got an empty space on a pie chart? Well, I still have to pass the bar. Yes! <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Now, listen, in the meantime, you can start clerking. We start in the morning at 9 o'clock, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I haven't even said yes yet. Yes to what? To me. Don't worry, Bauer. I'll be gentle with her. You know what? You can't blame yourself for Ben. I mean, the guy was a jerk. He was just using you. No. No, he wasn't. I mean, yeah, if anything, I used him, at least at first. He was just cute, and he was rich, and it was all I cared about. You remember. That's why I always thought you were with him. Yeah, but... That changed. I really did care about him. He doesn't deserve you. He never did. Maybe. It's not maybe. It's, it's true. Uh, and then just my dad was like so against Ben, you know, so it became this whole thing of like of like us against my dad. I'm not gonna let my dad run my life, you know, and then and then uh, and then Ben just got involved and all that stuff and he started lying to me and it was just like I, I couldn't see it, you know, and I, I think it was because I was so set on proving to my dad that I was right, which obviously I wasn't and I just ended up looking like a total loser. You're not. I should probably get back to work. Um, well, thanks for kicking my butt no, today. No. Do the same for me, right? Anytime. <laughs> you know what? I'm still on your feet. You're fired. I am unfireable, and I am going to unload the dishwasher. Want another shake? Shane? She's oh. gone. You can talk to me. I'm sorry. It's like the... The lights just get dimmer when she leaves, you know? You know, I wish someone would make the lights go on for her sometime. So my fear isn't so much for Cassie's physical safety. It may not even be a vision thing. It, it, it could just be my fear about Cassie changing and moving on. It could be. That's one interpretation. There are many others. That's why you need to explore this in a controlled environment. Hey, kids. Hey. Hi. You look happy. I am. I, I'm happy. I feel free. I have an open mind. Things are not as they seem. Your boy Arthur told me that. And you know what? There's going to be a new man in my life. So, there you go. You mean Edmund. <sighs> Interesting. <laughs> I'll be in touch, Reva. Okay. So, you decided to work with Christopher. Maybe. Where did you run off to? I went to Richard's grave. You were at the grave? How was that? It was good. It was good. I, I you know, I had to ask about Edmund. You know, I wanted to know if he was the man Richard was sending me. 
You can't stand it. Come on, you're dying to tell me what you think. No, I'm not. I'm having a vision. Reva Shane is a lousy liar. Come on, ask me about my date. I don't want to know. Okay, that there was some judgment in that. There was. Come on, come on, ask, 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 please, please. Ask you how your date with Edmund was? Ask you why you cut your hair without asking me first? Ask you what's going on with you? No, I don't need to know. I have some wallpaper samples that we could look at. Wallpaper? Your entire life is changing and you're bringing wallpaper to me? They're in the car. Come on. Oh, Cassie! Oh. You, know, you can't blame the kid for being bummed out. I mean, after what happened to her, but... They have a birthday party for her, say. So. Yeah. Uh, she's getting back on her. Uh oh. What are we talking about? Well, he was asking me if you were had been grounded since your birthday, but I said, in fact, you had not because you're 18. We can't do that to you. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, I've been trying to get rid of you for a few <laughs> days now. It's true. I think he'd sell me the gypsies at this point if they just cart me away. I got a better idea. What? You want to shag flies, practice fielding? No. <laughs> Write an essay. Oh, that's a really good it's idea. Not, really it's fun. not as lame as it sounds, okay? I have to write this essay for one of the scouts. All right, well, if it's about baseball, I'm sure it'll be a snap. It's not. It's about other stuff. You, you know, gotta write, like... Life questions, right? You know, your your expectations, your goals, stuff like that. Exactly. That's it. And I can't give beauty pageant answers. Oh, you mean you don't want to, like, be a neurosurgeon and raise puppies and promote world peace <laughs> with your pitching? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But no, seriously, I need to be serious about it, and I could really, really, really use your okay, help. Okay, okay, well, let's see it. It's at my house. So why don't you come over tonight? I mean, we could, we'll get some pizza, maybe we can go swimming afterwards, huh? Yeah, okay, cool. Nice. All right, so meet me, meet me at the pool house at like eight o'clock. All right, sweet, I'll be there. Nice. Lights are coming back on. Your lips. Hey, sweetheart, this is not about the career change because I am completely behind that. Well, then what? I mean, the DA's office is exactly what I wanted. But O'Neill isn't. You sure about that? I'm serious here, honey. I am. I, I am. I'm serious. Eddie, why are you so worried? Is it because he's such a pain in the butt? Oh, good. So you got that already. Yeah, about two seconds after he walked in the room. And, sweetheart, that's him being nice, the charming version. Imagine when he's on his bad behavior. You know what? You don't have to imagine. Because I can tell you at length, I work with the man. He is... He is a pit bull in sneakers. Okay, have you met Mrs. Gadsden on 4 West? Yeah, what is that? What about to... Mr. Morrison? Oh, and don't forget Douglas, the screamer who has to be restrained before every exam. Look, that's just one floor. This week, I know how to deal with difficult. At least the guy's not going to be in any pain. I don't have to be nice to him if he's not nice to me. Well, it's a whole different side to you. Yeah, my wife wants to kick some major league butt. No more of this <laughs> compassion niceties at the hospital. You want to bring on the pain. I'm ashamed to say this, but... Um... This whole new attitude of yours is turning me on. Oh. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> honey. Honey. Honey, it's... Are you, sure, it's are, you, are you sure you don't want to find an outlet for this attitude of yours? Baby, mm -hmm. it's going to be fine, okay? Hey, you know what? What? I didn't ask you about your race. How did it go? It was good. Yeah? yeah it was good. I wish I was there to cheer you on. Listen, I don't want to talk about my race. I want to talk about my precious wife. I don't want you in a working environment where some man is treating you badly on a daily basis. Do you oh, got that? Come on. Okay, that's it. That was my last shot. I give up. You win. I'll shut up. No, you won't. Yes, I will. But listen, honey, I promise you it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I like a challenge, and this will be a great way for me to find out if I like criminal law. One week. One week working with O'Neill, and you'll be begging them to lock you up. Don't count on it. I think this man's bark is much worse than his bite. We'll see. It's okay, I'm all, I'm all right. I don't know what's worse, that gaggle of children of yours or the so-called adults in this joint. 
Would you lighten up? <clears throat> Have you ever met an insult that you didn't like? <laughs> Your sister's upset, a little oh, tense. Yeah. She missed her playtime with her brother-in-law the other night. Are you still on that? You know, I, I didn't mean it. I only had a murder investigation to operate, but uh, it seems that I interrupted their foreplay. Nothing happened, okay? Nothing, nothing happened between me and Edmund, all right? Okay, because Jeffrey interrupted us, you know. It's gonna happen, Reva, all right? It's gonna happen, okay? Because, because I want it to happen. I do, you know? It's time. It's, it's, it's like when I cut my hair, you know? It, it, when all that dead stuff just fell on the floor, I, I have felt lighter than I have felt in ages. And for the first time, I really feel like this is right. This is really right, and I feel this is meant to be. And would you please say something to me? Please. Christopher Langham is a genius. What? All I had to do was keep my mouth shut, and you told me everything I needed to know. Well, your sister just played you like a violin. <laughs> hey, you, you see my lunch? has been Guiding Light.